Endocrine disrupting hormones. <laughs> what about them? What do we need to know? What's what, endocrine what, disrupting what chemicals? Endocrine disrupting chemicals. Sorry, not hormones. Yeah. 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 Endocrine yeah. disruptors in general, problematic, pervasive, ubiquitous. So I remember when I was in, I don't remember what grade it was in, maybe sixth grade or seventh grade. We did these like spelling things and I learned the word ubiquitous. And the association with ubiquitous was 7 Eleven. So ubiquitous. So think about as every time you see a 7-Eleven or like a grocery, a convenience store, I want you guys to think about endocrine disrupting chemicals because they are pervasive. They are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. And who knows how much of an impact they have on humans. But again, it's no better, do better. Um, I would like my testicles to work for as long as possible, as well as possible. And unlike James Cameron, right? Mm. I, I want mine to work as well for as long as I can. And to me, that means doing as much as I can intentionally in my life to minimize end endocrine disrupting chemicals. So we talked about PFAs a little bit, forever chemicals, cue the echo. Yeah. Those are a known endocrine disruptor. They're in plastics and they're in Lululemon leggings. They're probably in Nike leggings. They're in, they're potentially in the little, you know, those running shorts that have the built-in underwear for dudes or the mm. bathing suits that have the built-in underwear, yeah. potentially in your jujitsu compression shorts, all these things potentially have PFAs. Okay, change your underwear, change your clothing. That's not too hard. What about your coffee cup? You go to Starbucks, that's a paper coffee cup. It's lined with plastic that can have PFAs in it. And it's, you're putting a hot liquid in it and then you're drinking it. So that's potentially very bad. Yep. You go to Whole Foods in the hot bar or Erewhon in the hot bar and you get a sample of their food and that is a paper container that looks like it's biodegradable, potentially recycled, but it's also lined with plastic, which can have PFAs in it. So anything that's plastic is generally a source of PFA contamination. And why are PFAs bad? It's a forever chemical. That means it, it just like exists. It's really hard to break down. It's hard to break down in the environment. Yeah. Um, and when we ingest them, they look like hormones in our body. Predominantly, they look like estrogen, wow. which isn't good for men or women because excess estrogens are bad for women. Excess estrogens are bad for men. And if you, when I actually look into this, there is some hard data, it's a bad pun, that, that penises are shrinking and that the anogenital distance is shrinking in men as we evolve as humans, as we move on. And this is potentially contributing, this is potentially connected with these xenoestrogens not just PFAs, there are many others like phthalates and parabens, which we can talk about. So, but it is scary because we think of this anogenital distance, which is essentially that if you measure the taint, the distance between the testicles in a man and the anus. This is Shana Swan stuff. I think yes, this that. is Shana Swan stuff. Yep. Yeah. But this anal genital distance changes. So we know that when animals are exposed to PFAs, phthalates, xenoestrogens, this distance shrinks, which is feminization, and it's it's dangerous. So it can also be in the water, which is a great argument for purifying your water, potentially with reverse osmosis, drinking spring water, because if you go to the environmental working group and you look at Austin, Texas, for instance, there are probably no less than 27 environmental pollutants that are above the level that you'd want in your tap water in Austin, a collection of pharmaceuticals, pesticides, heavy metals, other problematic things, just in every water supply everywhere in the world. It's You're never gonna get a pure water especially in your tap water. And we know that these pharmaceuticals are persistent. So, you know, people put pills down the toilet, women take birth control, they pee it out. It's like, there's a lot of contamination in our water supply of excess estrogens, excess progesterones from women, other pharmaceuticals, statin drugs, proton pump inhibitors. It's just crazy, the pharmaceuticals that are potentially in our water supply. So back to endocrine disrupting chemicals. The other one that really gets me, this is perhaps the one that I hate the most, but it's just my subjective experience, are the fragrances, which are usually the phthalates. This is kind of like that word pterodactyl. It has an extra H and a TH, and it's a weird spelling word. But phthalates are, they're, they're fragrances. So I, in Costa Rica, which is where I spend a lot of time right now, I took my car to the mechanic and I get it back and the whole driver's seat just smells like this guy's cologne. And I sit in the car and then I smell the cologne on my clothes yeah. because there's a fragrance phthalate that's just meant to do that. It's meant to stick on things and cause a smell. You get in the Uber and you see the black ice, um, you know, pine tree in the on the rearview mirror, and the whole car smells like it. What does that mean if some people get a headache from that and some people don't? I, I get mean, a gnarly headache. Some people are more chemically sensitive. Even walking through the airport. Oh yeah, like the duty free thing where they like force you to walk through the like the, the bullshit. Yeah, you know, and all the perfumes, all the things. Ten seconds of that. I walk away and I, I have this lingering headache that I have to like kind of work out of myself. Is that, am I alone in that? No, there's a lot of people with you. I don't think we understand why some people are more chemically sensitive than others. There are many hypotheses out there, underlying toxicity, underlying issues with your detoxification systems. Everyone has different polymorphisms. Everyone has different genetics, the level of their liver and their ability to detoxify things. Maybe you're just not good at detoxifying that. Mm. But what that tells you is that even if you're smelling it, you're ingesting it. 
Yeah. So when you're in an like elevator, it's like a fart. It, yeah, it's going into your body, right? <laughs> like you're smelling somebody's <laughs> fart. You're literally eating their fart. You're basically eating it's their amazing. ass. It's amazing. You're eating their fart. Like just chop it up and put it on a sandwich. It's a fart sandwich, Science. right? Yeah. So you're, if you're smelling it, you're ingesting it. And yeah. because it's going into your body and that's scary because you think, oh, I'm at the gas station. I'm smelling gasoline. I'm ingesting gasoline. That's problematic for humans. But on the topic of these phthalates and these parabens and these xenoestrogens, you know, I get in the car, it smells like my mechanic, like I'm ingesting his cologne. I get in the Uber with the Uber driver. He has a black ice pine tree in the window. I get out of the Uber. All my clothes smell like the goddamn black ice thing because it's on the seats and it's on me. This is the problem with these fragrances. Even today at this Airbnb, I'm staying in Austin and this is the level at which people are going to be like, man, this guy Paul is crazy. The garbage bags are now scented. Oh, they're terrible. And they're so strong. Yeah. And I had to take the garbage out and my hands smell like the garbage bag fragrance. Take the garbage out and then I go to peel an orange and all this fragrance is on my hands that I'm now putting in the orange, which I'm ingesting. It's it's in my body. So they're impossible to avoid, but knowledge is power, know better, do better. And minimizing your exposure across as many things as possible is critical. So what fragrance is on your clothes from your laundry detergent? What kind of sheets are you sleeping in? Are you sleeping in polyester sheets? What were they washed in? There is this other chemical not connected with the fragrances necessarily called 1,4-dioxane, which is a probable carcinogen in humans. You may have seen this in New York recently outlawed 1,4-dioxane containing detergents that have more than two parts per million. And then there are multiple that have less than two parts per million, but still have 1,4-dioxane in them. I think seventh generation free and clear had zero parts per million. I just use white vinegar when I wash my clothes because it's pretty cheap and easy and safe. But I think about this a lot when I travel. What are the towels in the Airbnb that I'm going to stay at washed in? What are the sheets in the Airbnb that I stay at washed in? And I will even email the people and say, hey, can you wash them in a fragrance-free detergent? I may even bring white vinegar or wash the sheets in white vinegar. Again, this is me. This is my level of involvement in this. I will bring sheets when I travel now. I'll bring 100% organic cotton sheets that I know are washed in white vinegar. And I just throw them on the bed. I don't have to worry about it. But it's still like dish towels, towels, like the fragrance is everywhere. You don't have to completely change everything in your life if it's too much, but just changing the detergent you wash your clothes and everything in your house in will significantly decrease your exposure to 1,4-dioxane, potentially phthalates, parabens, and other problematic things for humans, just for you and everyone in your home.